Okay, and now probably the messiest part of the video, let's talk about block lists. So block lists are found within the privacy tab as well. And I'm gonna say it straight up. This is a highly personal preference and there is no correct answer. If you ask 10 different people what block lists they use in NextDNS, I bet you're gonna get like six plus different answers. And it's just not something worth fighting over. So um, I'm going to try to outline your options. So before we cover what this is, a block list is pretty much just a massive list of things to block. So you're gonna see here the next DNS one has almost 200,000 entries. And these are updated every day or so. And so this is literally like, it's not necessarily manual, but kind of. Like these lists are literally updated a lot of times daily. It depends on the list. You're gonna see here some of these lists are updated every day. Some of them are updated three years ago. So there's a lot of different things here that you should consider. First thing I'm gonna say, and I think these are kind of just basic rules of which ones to straight up avoid. I would avoid ones that haven't been updated, you know, in a year kind of thing. With the exception of something that's a little bit more universal, like for example, there's the NSA block lists, which blocks all known NSA, GCHQ, CIA, FBI, spying servers. Um, but this is from, you know, ancient stuff. So it's from WikiLeaks documents from, you know, a decade plus ago. So it makes sense why this one is only updated three years ago. That makes sense. However, something like Attaway, which is blocking mobile ad providers and some analytics providers being updated two months ago, that doesn't mean it's a bad block list. It's just personally, I want something that's gonna be continually updated because a lot of this is evolving over time. And also a lot of times there's false positives and you want those false positives to be fixed. So personally, I only look for kind of more recent things. Um, you're gonna find a lot of niche things like Windows Spy Blocker, which blocks spying and tracking on Windows systems. But as you might already be thinking, wait, this kind of contradicts the native tracking that we talked about here. So which one do I do? And that's kind of the sucky thing about NextDNS. It's kind of messy with some things like that. Um, there's no correct answer. Some people might find that the block list is better than the native tracking given by NextDNS. And some people might find the opposite experience. There's no correct answer here. With that said, I will say there is kind of one solution that I can comfortably recommend. And it's also what's recommended in the guide that I really enjoy. And it's actually Hagezi, 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 I don't know. I'm just gonna say Hagezi. And if that's not how it's said, you just really have to <laughs> work with me. Thank you. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up. The reason why I like Hagezi is there are numerous options. It's frequently updated. I mean, frequently, frequently updated. They're constantly going through this. And on top of that, they're constantly pulling out false positives as well. Um, it's something I've had a lot of luck with. It's what the guide I uh, am going to reference at the end of this video suggests as well. And it's what a lot of people are starting to migrate over to because it actually combines a lot of other really enjoyed block lists like OISD, Stephen Black, one hosts, no track, and a, quite a few other block lists. So if you like those other block lists, this actually takes a lot of those and combines them into one. So um, personally, that's what I use, and that's what I would recommend to most people, just because that's what I have personal experience with. I used to use OISD and a few other things, um, but I decided to just move all over to Hagezi, and that's all I use now. Now you might be asking, well, which Hagezi do I use? I think it really comes down to three options. So the lightest version, again, this all comes down to your threat model, this all comes down to how much you want to deal with the inconveniences of possible false positives. So the lowest option, and this is going to probably not result in many, if any, false positives, it's just going to take care of the staples, is Hagezi Multi-Lite. So this cleans the internet and protects your privacy. It just blocks ads, trackers, metrics, some malware, and some fake websites. Um, again, you can actually view more about this whole block list on their website. They're going to fully detail the difference here, so I'd really suggest going on the GitHub page, which is, again, linked in NextDNS. You can just click the link right there, and it'll show you the differences between between all of them. I personally really like Pro++. I think it's a sweet balance. That's what I use. And I've had very, very, very few false positives. The only false positives I consistently experience are with email unsubscriptions. So if I get an email from a company and I don't want to receive more emails from them, I'm going to click unsubscribe at the bottom of the email. And then I get blocked uh, because it's considered a uh, not because it's blocked by the block list. Um, and so when this happens, I just have to um, turn off next DNS on that device, re-click the link, and then I'm fine. But uh, Pro++ Plus Plus is personally what I use. It's definitely on the more aggressive side, but if it's too aggressive for you, then you can check out Pro, Normal, or Light. I would personally just go to Light or Pro. Um, normal just doesn't do that much more um, from my experience. Anywho, I can talk about block lists for probably an hour, but just to keep this simple, I think most people can just stick with the Hagezi suite 
and I personally use Pro++. Plus Plus, so I'm just gonna add that. And then when you add one, again, so just the final thing I'm gonna say about block lists is I think the most tempting thing to do is just to add a million of them. What's the harm in that, Henry? Why can't I just add all of them? That's gonna give me the best protection. And actually, maybe, maybe, you know, you're going to get the best protection by having 30 different block lists because maybe one misses one, but the other one picks up another, and then you're even more protected. So, yay, good for you. Now, there's two problems with that. One, it's gonna slow down your web traffic. The more block lists you have, the slower it's going to be to go through all the block lists and sift through the, the traffic. The second issue, and it's probably the bigger issue, is you're going to deal with a lot of false positives if you have a ton of block lists, and it's gonna be really hard for you to figure out which block list is causing that. Now, with that said, there are logs for NextDNS. Uh, I'm not gonna show them because I would spend a million years uh, just blurring everything just to show you this, but it's gonna show you domain blocked because of block list B or block list C, so then you know exactly why something was blocked. So it is easy for you to troubleshoot that, but it's still a nightmare to have to like manage all those block lists. And again, Hagezi actually combines a ton of other block lists already. So personally what I do, multi-pro plus plus, get rid of the next DNS one and you're done. The last thing I'm gonna leave you with before I move on is experiment. If you don't like this block list, try other ones. If you don't like this suite of Hagezi, try other ones. <laughs> so like, like I said, there's no foolproof way to do this. This is what I've seen the most success with and it seems to be the go-to recommendation for most people nowadays.